we have many different types of memory, and in turn, many different brain areas that are involved in working together to allow us to interact and remember skills, events, our environment, and so on. Let's take a closer look at some of the areas of the brain associated with memory. As we will soon see, memory involves many areas of the brain working together. The cerebral cortex is believed to be where the majority of sensory information is processed. That is what you are seeing, hearing, where you are, and what all that information means. As sensory information ascends to your brain, it first is sent to the thalamus. From there, signals from different sensory modalities are sent to and processed by different areas of the cerebral cortex depending on the sense. Vision is primarily processed in the occipital lobe. Audition, as might make sense, is processed in the temporal lobe right next to the ears. Touch is processed in the somatosensory cortex, which lies in the parietal lobe. Taste is processed in the frontal and temporal lobes. And lastly, smell or olfaction is processed in the olfactory bulbs, which are actually not a part of the cerebral cortex, but lie just above the cribriform plate. It is important to note that different sensory modalities are constantly being processed at the same time in your working memory. As we just learned, all of these different processes are taking place in different parts of the brain. As such, different aspects of working memory models can be hypothesized to be occurring in distinct cortices of the brain. Let's consider the Baddeley working memory model. When you are picturing things or images in your mind, you're engaging your visual spatial sketch pad and you are using your occipital lobe. Repeating things or talking to yourself in your head is the act of engaging the phonological loop, which activates parts of the cortex involved with hearing, speech, and language in the frontal and temporal lobes. And then finally, the central executive that plans and organizes your thoughts is located in your prefrontal cortex. If we move from sensory memory to working memory, and then finally to long-term memory, we must acknowledge the role of the mighty hippocampus which sits inside the cerebral cortices. The hippocampus can be visualized in this 3D representation, or by taking a sagittal section down the midline of the brain, looking at it from a medial view. The act of consolidating memory, or moving memories from temporary to long-term storage, is carried out by the hippocampus. Let's look at a simple example of how the hippocampus interacts with the cortex in memory processing. Let's say visual information processed by the eye is sent to the thalamus, then to the corresponding visual cortex in the occipital lobe. The information in the occipital lobe can be sent to the hippocampus for consolidation. Information can then be sent back from the hippocampus to the cortex for long-term storage. This is why when we are experiencing something, for example, seeing someone's face, our visual cortex is activated, but it's also activated when we think about the person in their absence. What about long-term memory? First, before exploring the brain structures associated with long-term memory, we should distinguish between the two general types of memory, explicit memory and implicit memory. Let's begin with explicit memory which refers to information about events and facts that you are conscious of. As we just saw, explicit memory is processed by the hippocampus and then sent for long-term storage in the cortical area that corresponds to the specific information type. For example, visual information is sent from the hippocampus after consolidation to the visual cortex in the occipital lobe. Auditory information is sent from the hippocampus to the auditory cortex in the temporal lobe. Somatosensory information is sent from the hippocampus to the somatosensory cortex in the parietal lobe, and so on. But what about memories like how to ride a bicycle 
or tie your shoes, or why you could drool every time you hear a bell ring. Implicit memories, those memories for procedural things like playing a musical instrument, habits, and skills, tend to be stored in structures below the cortex, known as the subcortex. The striatum, which is part of the basal ganglia, is responsible for procedural memories like sports skills and physical habits. Memories for precise movements like playing a musical instrument involve the cerebellum. And finally, the amygdala is responsible for associations we have between emotions and events, such as a graduation. In fact, our amygdala is what is responsible for a tendency to remember emotional stimuli better than neutral stimuli. As it may now be clear, the formation, consolidation, and retrieval of memories requires ongoing and dynamic processes of numerous structures throughout the brain. Hopefully by now, you can appreciate the immense brain complexity underlying everything from your most precious to your most mundane memories. Thank you.